What's up everybody? Welcome to today's video on Charleston Car Videos. I'm your boy Chad. We're going to be taking a look at the Infiniti G37S right here today. This vehicle was just purchased at the auction this past Friday and uh, now it's available this holiday season for somebody looking to drive something sporty. And let me tell you, the G37S is definitely a nice mixture between sporty and luxury, all wrapped into one big fat punch. So stay with us. All right, everybody, so to get things started today, this is a 2008 Infiniti G37S. I will walk around this pre-owned car, let you see the current condition of it. If I see any major dents, dings, scratches, imperfections, anything weird, wacky going on with the car, I'll point them out to you. Again, I always do the best I can to show you all the vehicles just the way I'm seeing them with my own two eyes. I will tell you, I'm not an automotive expert. I'm just a guy that likes selling cars and likes filming cars. And I do the best I can to show you what the deal is with them and what I can see with my own two human eyes. You know what I'm saying? So again, internal things going on in engines, I don't know all about. I'm getting better though. But what I see with my eyes is what I will show you. So the first off, a 2008 Infiniti G37. This is the front of the car. That's the headlights. That's the grill. Well, right off the get-go here, I am seeing some issues down here on the bumper. As you'll notice, I'm sure you can see them as well, we got some pretty heavy crackage going on there on the bumper with the paint and all that, okay? And that's not something that's rare to find on a car like this because this car sits pretty damn low to the ground and uh, it doesn't take much to be riding down the interstate and something being the road or maybe even hitting a curb or this, that, and the other and cracking that front bumper up. Okay, now what else do we see on the front of the car? Well, one thing that we're looking at here is this hood. You can tell that hood there is not evenly uh, sitting down. It's not even, okay? You can see. So what do we got going on, right? Is the hood popped right now? Well, no, it's not actually. Okay, the hood is not popped because I can't pull it up or hit a latch or anything. So that is just how that hood is sitting right now. You can tell over here, it's nice and even with the fender, but over here, my God, it's about at least a half an inch or so up over the fender, fender. okay? So that's letting us know that maybe the latch is, something's off with the latch, or maybe the car has been in an accident before. So those are things to pay attention to. Another thing to pay attention to, which was the first thing I saw on this car the night it came in off the 18-wheeler truck, is that bolt right there. Who in the hell would put a bolt like that in a bumper on a car? I mean, any legitimate body shop in Charleston, South Carolina that wants to have a good reputation in town would not put a bolt like that in the bumper of the car to hold it all together, okay? So that's, that's a telltale sign that someone that maybe owned the car or a family member or a friend may have done the work just to get this all back together and didn't want to spend the money to get it fixed properly. A lot of the times, folks, people will get in car accidents and things like that, and when the insurance company sends you a check to get your car fixed, they pocket the money and do a little, you know, DIY type fix, okay? The same with this light here. That light is not sitting properly in there. This is one of those cars where when you're about 15, 20 feet back, it looks good, but when you get up front, it's fugly, okay? The wheels, they have been tore the heck up, okay? They are eaten up by road rash and, and curbs. That's called a curb mark. These are beautiful rims, by the way. Inky is the actual rim brand, and uh, it's a great looking wheel. It's got a nice finish on it, but unfortunately, someone has eaten up the curbs with the rims. Now, you got the big brake upgrade back here. It's an S model, so you got four piston calipers here. They kind of look like those big Brembo brakes, but I don't know if those are Brembos or not. They may be, though. They may be. Anyways, what kind of tires do we have? Well, we got a 225 45 series tire. They're um, General G Max with a 19 inch rim. Um, the tires are not brand new, but they do got enough tread to get you down the road for quite some time after you buy the car. So that's an okay thing. Now let's go take a look at the other side over here. Again, you know, some people may watch my videos and say, man, 
you are actually not selling me the car because you're talking about it and maybe you're causing me not to like it so much. Well, I'm not trying to do that, y'all. not trying to be negative on these cars at all. All I'm trying to do is show you the actual vehicle. There's not going to be a lot of car dealerships out there that will actually be transparent like this and show you the real condition of a used car that they have that they're selling. I will do that. I want to make sure you know all about it as best as I can. Now, if you thought the other rim on the other side of the, the road over there was in, in pretty rough shape, look at this one here. I would say at this point, folks, this entire rim needs to be replaced, okay? It has been tore up something serious. It looks like Jaws came up and took a bite out of that thing and was gnawing on it and maybe flossing his teeth with those big old shark teeth, okay? It has been literally eaten up. I mean, someone just said, the hell with it. I don't like these rims. I'm going to drive into the curb and I'm just going to see how many sparks I can get to fly up on the side of the car. I mean, that's what you got going on here. Also, someone might have said, I'm at the club and I'm drunk as a skunk and I'm driving into curbs tonight to get attention. I don't know what they were thinking. But you're also missing, if you can look closely here, you're missing the actual black fender well uh, stuff in here that protects this vehicle from getting dirt and grime and water and all up into the electronical areas back there. As you can see, you still have the metal part right there where the bolt goes in to hold that plastic liner in there, if that's what you want to call it, okay? Again, sometimes I break it down in layman's terms because I don't know the names of these things, but I think it's a black liner of some sort. So there's that rim. My lordy lord, that thing has been eaten up. Now, the actual body of the car, not too bad shape, is it? No, not too bad. So, right now we're looking at it and we're saying, all right, we need to probably replace the wheels on the vehicle. It definitely needs some new rims because God have mercy on the back rim. I thought that one was bad. My Lord, look at this thing here. Now, this looks like a child walked up with a black magic marker and started black magic marking the all over the wheel. I mean, they painted all over it. I mean, good gracious, what was somebody thinking? But my Lord. Personally, guys, just to be straight up and honest with you, I've been in the car business now since 2001, selling vehicles, and I've never in my entire career seen a car on a car lot with rims like this for sale. My Lord, that thing has beat the hell up and back, okay? Just being straight up with you. But guess what? That's just the face of the rim. That does not mean this car is gonna shake, bobble, and weave, and turn, and move, and act all funny on the road. We're going to see today, does the rims really affect the ride quality of the car when they're eating up like that? If it doesn't, you may not have to replace the rims on it. You may just leave them just like that and drive this car every day. You do got a smart key. It's definitely been wearing a little bit on there. That's that button everybody wants to hit. You know, you don't have to hit the buttons. You can walk up to the car and just get in and not have to do that. But some people do it. You got a backup camera right there. Okay, but let's go ahead and hit the trunk button. Hold that down. Open the trunk up. Let's see what we got going on back here. Well, a very clean trunk, by the way. Look how nice and clean the mat is. Now, one thing I'm telling you right now, I can already tell what type of person probably had this car. And uh, this person had speakers in the trunk, okay? As you can see right there, somebody had some pretty big wires right there in this car, which is gonna let me know right off the get-go here that somebody had some big old subwoofers in the trunk of the car, like some 212s or 215, I don't think 15s are fit, but 210s, 212s in the back, bumping and making a bunch of noise at the stoplight, thinking they are Coolio going down the highway with the dreadlocks and the braids, or they might think they're Eminem cruising down the way being a Slim Shady. But all I'm saying, I like hip hop music myself, but we know we had speakers in here, so we know that somebody that owned this car, possibly at one point or another, may have even had aftermarket wheels on the vehicle because they knew that the rims they had were all tore up and they probably had some pretty chrome wheels or something on here that was a little different, okay? So anyways, that's okay, it's not a problem. You may buy this car. If I bought this car today, got a button here, but if I bought this car today, I probably would put a different set of wheels on it myself, wouldn't you? Probably so, you know, just because these rims are kind of tore up and the car would definitely look nice with a new set of shiny wheels. Now you do have a little dent right there, okay, I just want to point that out to you. I'm not going to walk by anything on the car 
If it doesn't, ha if it's got something going on, I'm gonna walk by and show it to you. Again, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to upset anybody that's watching the video, but it definitely has seemed that a few people have gotten upset off after watching some of my videos, thinking that I'm just totally, you know, talking down to the vehicle. Like the vehicle's got feelings or something, you know? Like the car's crying after I get done doing a review on it. My lordy lord, please let's pray for the Infinity G37S today that this Infinity Lord Jesus, please make sure this Infinity G37S does not get offended by the things that I'm saying, but maybe more offended by the person that used to drive it than except that I was, if I was driving it, I would take care of this beautiful car. You know, that's the whole thing, folks. It really comes down to the person that owned it before. Did they really care about having a nice, beautiful car because a person like myself would say man I'd love to have an Infiniti G37S I'd be like you know in heaven driving a car like this and then another person may say well I can drive whatever the heck I want to drive and I'll drive it to the wheels fall off so anyways the seats are in pretty decent shape they do got their you know just normal wear and tear I've seen a lot of leather seats do that but I have not seen a whole lot of cars though in my years with all these rips and tears, okay? I'm starting to see them more out here at the Auto Buy Center, but I've seen a lot of cars in my years and they haven't had leather problems. And I'm wondering now, why is it that some of these older vehicles I'm filming are having these leather problems? Well, I'll tell you the reason right now, okay? It has nothing to do with the car dealership. It has to do with the vehicles. For my past 10 years of filming cars on YouTube, I've been filming newer cars, you know? Closer to new. I have not been doing a lot of videos on 10 plus year old cars. So I'm finally being able to see how the conditions are going to hold up on an old vehicle. So we're learning a lot. Now one thing I'm going to pay attention to today, right here, check this out. Look at this brake pedal, okay? And that's a little dirt on there, but I want you to look at the brake pedal because we're looking to see if there's any major wear and tear on that rubber. And that rubber, rubber right there has actually got some basic wear and tear, just wear, no tear, but some basic wear on the rubber. Um, nothing really major. That rubber is not all worn down or anything like that, which helps because you got this pedal with this chrome right here, okay? But you're looking under here because you're looking to see how the floors are worn out or if they're worn out. They seem pretty good. To see if a vehicle has been on the highway more or on the city driving more, right? That's what we're looking for right now. We're going to take a look at our uh, belt here to see how it's frayed, frayed up and it's dirty or how the belt is looking because it's going to come across your body about like that there and right now the belt is actually looking pretty good doesn't it's got a little bit of fraying going on right there but that looks pretty normal it's not all torn up so that tells me that this possibly was a car that was driven more on the interstate than possibly on the city I mean every car rides in the city but um, you know, a car that's got high mileage, and I can pretty much guarantee right now this is probably going to be a high mileage car. I do not know the mileage on it yet because we just got it in. First time uh, testing it out. And just so you know, these are reaction videos more than anything. Cranks right up. You know, some people say, uh, you know, that they don't, um, that, oh, I need to uh, do more research on cars before I film them. But that's not the uh, MO of my channel here, folks. What I do on my YouTube channel is I'm doing a reaction on a car that I've never touched, I've never got inside, I've never looked at at all, okay? And um, so like I don't know the mileage because I've never been in this car before. And um, this is my first time being inside of it. It's got heated seats, the lights work on both sides. You got your automatic here. Definitely got some uh, some wear going on on here from somebody's ring or something like that or a watch or something. You know, the clock though is in good shape. Um, we have, let's go ahead and take a look at the mileage on this car and see what kind of miles is on this Infiniti. Um, this one has got, well wow, we it's got 152,794 on a 2008 Infinity G37S so you would say that's probably high mileage right people do 10 to 15,000 miles a year so 152,000 is high mileage which means that this car may have been on the interstate a lot and um, you definitely the dash has not really held up all that great on this car you can see here you got the basically the material on the dash is starting to peel up and tear up okay look at that I mean just you can really get a good look of how it's how it's really starting to crack and uh, and just deteriorate 
over the past uh, 10 years, okay? Even all the way down into here. Um, you know, this seat has turned out a little bit better, but you can see the color just kind of fading away. Um, the chrome and all on here is starting to fade out over there. But, uh, I mean, that dash has really taken a, a beating from the sun, okay? Most people that drive cars don't tear up their dashes, okay? This is, has to do with the sun. That's why it's so important to put a sunshade up over that window. Um, it definitely looks like it was smoked in because we got a, a cigarette kind of burn right there, if you can see that. Uh, a little tough to get in there and see, but there's a little cigarette burn here. Okay, the uh, the headliner in the car definitely got lights there, but you can you can tell if a car's been smoked in. Look at the mirror, okay? You can see how there's a haze on that mirror. See when I do my fingers? That right there is nicotine that's built up onto those mirrors. The nicotine has also been built up onto the headliner from smoking inside the car, whether it's cigarettes, blunts, uh, cigars, you know, whatever it is. There's another cigarette burn right up top right there, uh, which is kind of interesting because someone's going to have the window down and they're going to ash out the window, especially right there. They're going to ash out the window and the cigarette is going to tap on that, that felt material and uh, it's going to scar it for life. This is where it gets really bad over here. You got cigarette burn here and there. Okay, so you got two of them right up here from them ashing. Um, discoloration going on on here. Uh, look at all the dirtiness up here. Okay, this is a filthy, dirty mirror that needs to be cleaned off. You got more, oh, just nasty. Look like someone popped a pimple right there and got the icky ick juice all over the, the pus got all over that. So, I mean, this is just, you know, it definitely needs to be detailed. Uh, hasn't been cleaned up yet, but uh, unfortunately, when people smoke in cars, it's a uh, it's a thing you don't think about at first. You say, you know, I'm gonna smoke in my car, and uh, hell, you know, I'll get the car detailed and cleaned after I, um, you know, when I'm ready to sell it or whatnot. But uh, a lot of people just trade cars in, and they don't really uh, put a whole lot of care into, uh, you know, into the vehicle as it's been smoked in. Um, the screen's working great, okay? The colors look good. You got your lines on there and all of that. So that's not too bad. Something a little weird looking going on right there on the screen. I've never seen that before. I think that's the Infinity logo down there. Anyways, now what this car is supposedly special about, what's special about this car is the engine, okay? A 3.7 liter V6 under the hood of this small coupe. This car should have plenty of power, fun to drive, and it's real wheel drive, by the way. And it's got paddle shifters up here, right there, which is nice. But this should be a fun driving car. So stay with us. We're going to go grab our dealer tag, and then we're going to go take it out for a quick spin. All right, everybody, we're back inside the Infiniti G37S. We're going to go ahead and take it out for a quick spin. Um, before we do, though, let's get our air conditioner blowing in here. You know, definitely want a little cool air blowing because it is, you know, even though the weather is a little bit warm out or cool outside today, um, it's still warm in here and it's making my glasses fog up and the windows are getting some condensation on them. So, and we just want to make sure the air conditioner works inside the car. And um, I think it's working. It's feeling cool. It's not cold yet. So we'll give that just a moment. And uh, let's go ahead. We're just going to drop. We don't really have to go real far in it. We're just going to cruise it right down the road here and see how she handles. Let's roll our window down. To... We're also feeling these rims out right now to see how they are. Because the rims on the car. Okay, the car's already. My God. All right. Give it some gas. So the that um you can definitely feel the wobble going on in the rims on the front of the car. Uh, when you hit the gas, the car wants to kind of pull to the right and the left. It's kind of odd. Um, let's let me try to show you again real quick.
You see what I'm talking about? So the car does not, it doesn't really have a safe feeling when uh, hitting the gas down on it. It really does, gonna, it's gonna need some rims and some tires probably. Um, we're gonna look more thoroughly into this when we get back, but let's keep driving and see how she feels. I mean, now riding right now at about 50 miles an hour, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of play, you can feel it in the steering wheel and all, um, but not too bad. Okay, so it doesn't, doesn't feel too bad. Um, the brakes on the car doing pretty good. I'd hope so. I mean, they're massive size brakes on the car. You got huge four piston uh, calipers up front. I believe that's what they are. Um, steering should be pretty good in this car. Let's uh, let's see how that rides back here a little bit. You know, I love the layout on the inside of the car though, just the dash. It's very comfortable um, to sit in, that's for sure. Let's do a little. But yeah, my only thing was is on the highway, when I hit the gas down kind of hard, it definitely uh, moved around a little bit, so you would, want to make sure you got your hands on the steering wheel and I mean of course you're going to have your hands on the steering wheel anyways but um, you know I have one hand on the steering wheel one on the camera but you would definitely want to hold on to that steering wheel a little bit that may be just how an Infiniti G37 is though I don't know you know I haven't driven a whole lot of these um, that may be something that uh, that you may know maybe you have driven one before and uh, we're at the uh, good old Ott's trailer park this is definitely uh, not where I where I ended up wanting to go. I didn't want to end up in somebody's trailer park, but uh, we'll definitely give it a test on the gravel. Um, and we'll just do a little loop-de-loop -loop here. So this is what it's like to live out in the out in the sticks, I guess. I didn't mean to be riding through people's yard. They got, definitely got nice boats out there, though. But, um... Definitely don't want to make a habit of cruising through the trailer park on my test drives, but um, suspension's definitely kind of bumpy going through these bumpy roads back here. Uh, this is definitely more for a truck. Okay, now there we go. Slip. A slip light just came on on the dash. I think that's just letting me know. Yeah, I think the slip light coming on has something more to do with uh, slip, you know, it's it's slipping, I guess. Maybe it has something to do with the VSA, Vehicle Stability Assist, I'm really not sure. Um, but one thing that's positive today is uh, there's no check engine lights on, that's a first. <laughs> so, we don't have any check engine lights on. The body in the, of the car, pretty decent shape, doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, we don't know the price yet, I'm going to find that out today though and see what we're gonna sell this car for. Because I think that will be the determining factor of would you buy this car or not, right? You know, would you buy a 2008 Infiniti G37S for this price and this condition? So stay with us. definitely out of alignment it needs an alignment for sure and uh, I don't know if that has to do with I don't think the alignment the way it's pulling a little bit I don't think that really has anything to do with the rims being curved up like that but what I can tell you is the uh, the way the car feels a little shaky in the steering wheel and all that I think it all kind of comes into play really 
because if the rims are uh, curved up like that, that much, like they are, then, you know, who knows what was going on at that particular time when they got curved up, you know? Was it, um, you know, was it to the point where, you know, the car flew over a curb or, you know, or just, you know, hitting potholes, you know, if, if, a, if a person that owns a car is going to be that rough on it to basically curb up every wheel on a car like that, I mean, you know, did they really care about hitting every pothole in the road and all that kind of thing, right? Because it can bend the rims and those big old wheels, you know, it's easy to bend a big wheel when you got a small tire hitting potholes and things like that. So, you know, that's something to think about. Uh, what else can you think about, right? I mean, hitting potholes makes the alignment fall out of place. So, I definitely can see, you know, those things needing to be fixed. But, uh, once again, once we figure out what the price is on the car, you know, that's really what it comes down to at the Auto Buy Center out here is the price of a car and you buying it for a cheap price and you go getting it fixed, okay? That's the, the deal that we bring to people out here at the Auto Buy Center is uh, we buy the cars at the auction and we sell them right after we get them. And uh, you get a great deal, we get a great deal, and uh, and you got yourself a nice cash car for the money. So that sometimes works out. Anyways, last thing, last but not least on this long review is uh, to pop the hood and see how that's going and give you the price. All right, everybody, we got, the, uh, we got the hood popped. I went ahead and cut the headlights on and the blinkers on so you can see all that on the vehicle because uh, you know, I didn't get to show you all the lighting before. But before we do, let's take a look and see how the engine is uh, doing under here, under this hood. You know, luckily, I've never had my finger chopped off yet under a hood of a car doing that number there. I don't think any uh, engineer would be putting uh, fans or blades. So one thing we're noticing is, look, our uh, shocks are definitely out of working order, okay? They're not gonna hold up that hood at all anymore. Um, there's your V6, there's your intake, no aftermarket, no crazy stuff. You know, you got two intakes on the car, you got one here and one over there, and there's your big old engine, okay? Um, brake fluid is back here, battery's over there, and uh, realistically here, pretty clean under the engine bay of the Infiniti G37S, so not bad. Again, just needs some shocks. Um, we do have this here, which is kind of odd to me, this thingamajiggy. I don't know why that is uh, there, other than maybe to, well, I guess there's, an, I guess there's another one right here. So uh, those are, oh, okay, those are to latch the hood down and lock it in place. So as you can see, this one's pretty tight and in there good. This one, not as much. Maybe that has to do with why the hood is just, you know, out of order. And uh, as you can see, Mr. Chad is uh, trying to figure these things out on the video. Okay, see this little thingamajiggy here? And I actually screwed this up like this to right about there. That one is just fine and dandy over there. And when I did that, I actually, it got rid of that gap. Now it's nice and smooth other than that little ding right there. It's nice and smooth gap all the way around, okay? That's how it should be. So if you're watching the video towards the end, now you know that that's what the situation was with the hood being off a little bit on the on the, uh, the gap there. Okay, anyways, headlights are in good shape. Uh, you got your Xenons here, brights there, your lights there. There's no crazy LED lights going on at all on this 2008. And uh, this headlight's working great over here. There you go. That headlight's actually a little bit better shape than that one over there. You'll notice this one's all nice and pretty and clear. And this one has got that oxidation going on. I never understood why, why the cars, why one headlight would oxidize more than the other one. Other than maybe when you're driving, maybe the sun was hitting on one light more than the other one, right? I don't know. That's just a, a thought of mine. And, um, and then your taillights, you do have the LEDs in there that look good at nighttime, but those are all running out pretty good as well. So not a bad car, don't know the price yet, but I'm going to find out and I'm going to put it in the video one way or another. Thanks for watching everybody, have a great day. If you're interested in buying this car from us at whatever that price is and with 156,000 miles or so, um, you might be able to be extremely happy with this car, you know, and just get a new set of wheels 
order you a nice set of aftermarket rims or even order another set of infinity wheels and you'll have yourself a beautiful car after just putting a little bit of money into it. Now the rims will cost you some money for sure, okay? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it on that one, okay? I mean, getting another set of 19 inch rims is gonna cost you a pretty penny. Maybe two grand, maybe less, I don't know. And tires you may be able to use, but um, you know, put a little bit of money into getting you some rims and tires get a few of these little dents and dings fixed on the car get a dent guy to pop them out for you and uh, get a guy take the car somewhere to a shop and get him to respray the front bumper and fix this bolt here and put a liner in those fender wells and i think you have a very nice car and you'd never be able to tell that it was um you know it looked like a totally brand new nice beautiful 2008 infinity okay you have a nice car for a great price so hopefully we can sell it to you today and get you a deal and get you a nice looking car and look good out there in that driveway so anyways have a blessed day everybody thanks for watching like comment subscribe on the channel let me know what you thought about this uh, infinity g37s we'll see you then